G'day, I'm James. Let me deal with one final question in the story of trigonometry, or just geometry in general. Going from degrees to radians, this weird thing called radians. Now you might be in an upper level class right now, pre-calculus or calculus or something, saying, no, 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 you've been trained to think degrees for the last 10, 11 years with schooling. Let go of that. We want you now to do radians all of a sudden, just switch on you. I want to talk about radians. What are these things, where they're coming from, and why do you want to go from degrees, which we've been trained to think about intuitively all our schooling lives, up to the very end, and suddenly switch to radians. It seems awfully odd. Maybe it even seems cruel. Okay, but there's an actual course, a natural human story about that. And I want to tell that story right now, because maths is a very human enterprise. In fact, I want to get at that human story by asking first a very non-human question. How many degrees are in a Martian circle? Whoa, whoa, that's a weird question. Um, well, you know, you might say 360 degrees, because it's 360 degrees in a circle. It's a circle whether it's Martian or Earthling or not. 360 degrees in a Martian circle. But, you know, then you start saying, well, hang on, it can't be as simple as that. Something strange is going on here. How many degrees are in a Martian circle? And I realized, well, do you know what? I actually don't know the answer. I guess the question I just answered is this one. I've answered how many degrees are in an Earthling circle. And I guess I can say we like to believe that one full turn is 360 degrees. So actually, this is a great technique in mathematics. If someone gives you a challenge or a problem to solve and you don't like it, don't do it, change it. I, felt I didn't like the word Martian, I just changed the earthling and I got the answer 360 degrees, I'm done. But here's the thing, here's the thing. Every question answered actually induces, invites more questions. Because I'm now wondering, think about it, 360. Let me focus on earthlings for a moment. I will get back to Martians, but let me come back to earthlings for a moment. 360. Where did that number come from? Who chose the number 360 for the count of degrees in a circle? If I just walked into a room and said, and you were sitting there, I said, quick, think of a number for the number of degrees in a circle. And you said, uh, 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 I've never thought this before, I just choose uh, 360. You wouldn't naturally come up with the number 360, that's kind of weird. So here's my next question. What made us Earthlings, I'll answer the Earthling question, choose the number 360 for the count of degrees in a circle? It's actually kind of curious. And you think for a while, you think for a while, okay, Earthlings, Earthlings. Um, all right, what do we think about circles? What do we think about big cycles, circles in the world? And one big natural cycle that actually occurs to us as Earthlings is, okay, the cycles of the days and seasons and months of a year. Like one full year is one great cycle of seasons, and we seem to go through that regularly in our lives. So people said, oh, I guess we'll associate one full year with one cycle. And people said, oh, that's a good idea because then we could say the number of degrees in one full cycle should be the number of days in a year. And you think, hang on, hang on. 360 is not the number of days in a year. The number of days in a year is actually 365. In fact, Babylonians and Sumerians some 4,000 years ago actually knew it's not quite that number, it's actually 365 and a quarter with a little smidgen more. So we should actually then be saying, we're thinking a year is our earthly, earthly experience of a cycle, is the number to go with a count of degrees, we should be saying there are 365 and a quarter degrees in a circle. 365 and a quarter. Ugh, and that's the natural response. Ugh, think about it. Would you like to be doing mathematics with the number 365 and a quarter all the time? No, no one in the right mind wants to do maths with that number, so what's the very natural human thing to do to a number like that? Round it. You want to round it. Okay, so let's think this through. Let's think this through. If I said to you, just out of the blue, don't think about the context, please round the number 365 and a quarter, you might say, okay, um, round it, round it. I might round it to the nearest integer. That seems the natural thing. We'll round to 365. Great. Or we might say, no, no, I should round it to the nearest 10. If I'm rounding to the nearest 10, the nearest 10 is actually up to 370. Yet somehow we decided to round down to 360 for some reason. Why? Why do we decide to round down to 360 or not just stick with 365? What's going on? Now think about it, think about it. You're back in ancient Babylon some 4,000 years ago and you're basically doing all your maths in your head or like on sand with sticks and something. You're basically doing mental arithmetic all the time. Which of these numbers is best for doing mental arithmetic in life? Just want to make life easy, be human, make life easy for yourself. You probably get rid of 365 because you can't even halve it nicely. At least you can halve those numbers. Often you want to do half a turn, in which case even numbers better to work with. So you probably get rid of 365 as a choice. Right, 360 divided by 2, 370 divided by 2. But actually, 360 is also divided by 3, 370 isn't. 360 divided by 4, 370 isn't. 360 divided by 5, okay, it was divisible by 5. It's divisible by 6. It's divisible by, no, no, it's not divisible by 7. In fact, nothing's ever divisible by 7. It's divisible by 8, that isn't. It's divisible by 9, that isn't. It's divisible by 10, that is as well. It's divisible by 12, by 15, by 18, by 20, by 24, by 30, by 36. It's ridiculously divisible. 
So if you're stuck in life doing arithmetic based in your head, this is a much friendlier number to work with than even a 370. It's highly divisible, it keeps you in the whole numbers an awful lot of times, it's a desirable number. So we Earthlings decided, let's work with the number 360 as approximation to 365 and a quarter, the number of days in a year, for the count of degrees in a circle. So I think I felt now, now finally answered, we Earthlings like to say that one full turn, one full turn matches a count of 360 degrees. Just because we are on this particular planet going around that particular sun, which happens to go around that sun in 365 and a quarter days in a year, and we don't like hard work, so we round it to a really nice number. <sighs> Got it? Got it. Very intuitive and very human, very literally human, very earthling. So then comes the question, my first question. Not the story for earthlings, what do you think the story is for Martians? In fact, I'll just do this, actual Martians. What do we need to know for Martians? Well, I'm sure they're not going to say the number 360. There's no reason for them to think the number 360. So what do we need to know about Martian life? Well, it'd be the, probably, you know, maybe the equivalent. Those Martians might say, okay, what's one great big natural cycle we experience living on this planet? And they might say, okay, the number of days in our year. Now, we don't happen to call Martian days days. I don't know if you saw the movie The Martian, but you might know that we call a Martian day a soul. But I happen to know one soul is 24 hours. Whoops and 37 minutes long. It's just a tad longer than an Earth day. All right, so souls. We know how many souls are in a Martian year. They'll think one full cycle on Mars might be the natural number to associate with one full cycle. So how many souls in a Martian year? And we as citizens of the 21st century, the correct thing to do right then is just look it up, Google it. How many souls are in a Martian year? How many days are in a Martian year? Watch out. Watch out for your answer. You might come up with two different answers. One answer might be giving you the number of Earth days in a Martian year, irrelevant to Martians, and then we'll give you the number of Martian days, the number of souls in a Martian year. If I got it correct in my head, it's something like 668 souls in one Martian year. In which case, those Martians say to themselves, okay, let's associate the number 668 with one full turn, and they might say to ourselves, oh, do I like the number 668 for doing with sticking our heads? Probably not, they'll probably round it. So now it's a matter of speculation, of course. Do we want to round the sign to 660? Is that a nice number to work with? Maybe 640 is a bit nicer. Maybe round up to 700 or 720? Speculation. But my point is, my point is, you can now see you can actually answer questions like this. How many degrees in a Martian circle? Something relevant to Mars. For us humans, we say 360 degrees in a human circle because it's relevant to us Earthlings on this planet Earth. Nothing to do with mathematics. Did you notice that? The only connection with mathematics is talking about circles. So this is fine. And you can do an awful lot of mathematics with this number 360, and it seems fine and grand and great. Until you start getting to some other upper level mathematics, and you realize this number here is actually unnatural to mathematics itself. It's actually kind of unnatural, which is weird. And it's not until you get to high level maths you start to see that. Now the curious thing about the curriculum is that we actually don't have any need to change that to uh, change this measurement in any school maths. But they say, look, let's give students a chance to see these things called radians. So when they do upper level maths, they know what they're talking about. Well, I'd say don't do it until you need it. Unfortunately, the curriculum makes you do it now. All right, so we can do it now. I'll give you the story because actually it's a lovely math story. So the point is, as you start doing advanced maths, and I'll tell you what that maths is in this video, um, you'll realize. That's actually a really, really unnatural and awkward number for mathematics. So let's think ourselves, okay, maths doesn't know about what planet we happen to be living on, so we want a more natural way to count the number of degrees or some measure of turning, one full turn. So let's go back to the basic things. Let's just make it as simple as possible. We're talking about one full turn, one full turn. Here's the thing about a circle. They come with their natural measuring sticks. Each circle comes with a measuring stick and a good natural measuring stick is its radius. So here's a very natural thing to do that's actually all about that picture and the mass of that picture. Nothing about Earth, about that picture. Well, let's just say the amount of turning that corresponds to one measuring stick worth, that's one radius, just do one, uh, one amount of turning, one amount of walking on the circumference, and we'll call that amount of turning right there one radian. End of story. The one radius is the amount of turning you do walking along one radius worth of the perimeter. That's it. That's it. In which case, I walk along two radiuses of the perimeter. Two radiuses, I don't know if my picture's good, it'll be two radian. Walk three radiuses, it'll be three radian, and so on. In fact, if you walked all the way around, if you walked all the way around, we know the circumference is, whoops, circumference, 
is 2 pi radians. Oh, walking all the way around must be 2 pi radiuses. 2 pi radiuses. One full turn is now 2 pi radians. There is a definition of amount of turning that's actually inherently natural to the math. It's just what circles want. You might as well use the, measure, the, the radius as the measuring stick. In which case, that's very natural to the math. End of story. That's what a radian is. We're going to say now that one radian is, so two pi radius is the amount of one full turn. How much one radius is to have for how you walk and just walking a radius is worth along the circumference. Brilliant. Now, People just, that's the fact, that's the only thing you have to have in your head. That's the only thing you have to have in your head. It's the only thing I have in my head. People have to make you memorize all sorts of things. But we'll just now do like a little, little scaling and tandem thing. So if you want a half a turn, half a turn must match half of two pi radians. Pi radians. Uh, half a turn is 180 degrees. So actually, this is actually what I more have in my head. Pi, 180 degrees is pi radians. Great! Or 360 degrees is 2 pi radians. Both are good. Both are good. Um, okay, so if you want to um, halve this again, you'll see that 90 degrees matches pi on 2 radians. Or a third of that gives that 30 degrees matches pi on 6 radians. And so on. Um, I can actually scale up and down any way I like. Uh, 45 degrees, I happen to know is half of 90 or a quarter of 180, must be pi on 4 radians. All you have to do is just take this particular um, equation or this equation and just scale it up and down to get any number of degrees you want or any number of radians you want. Or in fact, let's do that. How many degrees is one radian? One radian. So let's take my basic equation. I want to get one radian. Okay, let me divide both sides by pi and I see that 180 over pi degrees is one radian. And if you get out your calculator, I think if I remember correctly, this turns out to be about, you know, 180 divided by 3.14 roughly is about 57.3 degrees, I think. That's about 57.3 degrees of turning. If you walk one radius's worth around the circumference of a circle, you've turned through an angle of 57.3 degrees, one radian. Great. Um, if you want a general formula, because I don't know why, you might want general formulas, multiply both sides by x, and we now learn that x radians must be 180 over pi x degrees. And this now gives a hint about why radians are more natural than degrees. This ratio, pi over 180, keeps coming up if you're working with degrees in upper level maths. So let me give you a sense of that upper level maths right now. What happens? So I'm really talking about calculus here. So I'm going to give, you know, speak, calculus speak right now in the story of trigonometry. And one thing you learn in calculus, as you play with derivatives and all the rest, derivatives and integrals, that the derivative of the basic trig function sine of x turns out to equal cosine of x, which is lovely and simple. Except this assumes x is in radians. If you actually do all the work in calculus and just keep the x in degrees all the time, you'll find this formula is something like this. If I get it right, I think I get it right, pi over 180 cosine of x. So I might be upside down. Check me out. If you know calculus, if x is in degrees, is this the correct formula for the derivative of sine of x in degrees? Degrees. And this is why mathematicians don't like working with degrees because every time you do calculus, up comes a factor of pi of 180. Do something else, another factor of pi of 180. The fact that these pi's and 180's or 180 over pi's are coming up all over the place throughout calculus if you're doing degrees, which is just horrible and messy and nasty and ugly. No one likes doing hard work. In fact, if you go with radians, you'll see that the root of sine of x is just one times cosine of x. No awkward ratios there. It makes the formula simple and natural. In fact, the maths wants us to think this way because it makes the calculus look, just follows that natural suit. Everything's so simple, streamlined, and beautiful. It seems natural to the maths to go with the maths definition. Whoa, whoa, so that's the scoop. That's what's really going on here. It's for the upper level mathematics that we want to go to radians. Um, I'm sorry, I don't know why the standard curriculum makes students actually do radians early on, probably because they need to know it later, in which case I say, if you need to know it later, do it later. You can actually do all the school mathematics in degrees and it'll be fine. Uh, it's just to get, trying to give a taste of what comes up down the road. Um, I will tell you one thing, if you know how to graph things, some curricula might try to convince you that if you scale your axes in terms of radians, then your sine graph will look like this. If you do like a perfect square ratio, and right there, the tangent line has slope of 1. If you did degrees here, and if you kept your scales like literally in the aspect ratio they're meant to be, you'll get this horrible ratio of pi over 180 for the, for the slope there. 
If that's compelling to you as a reason why you want to do, do radians, great. If it's not, this is really the reason. It's really the calculus that makes calculus easy to go with radians. Okay, that's the scoop. Okay, just wanted to give you, this, to give you the story. Again, a natural human story about mathematicians trying to make life easy. Grand.